Hello. Happy, Happy Empathy Day. Day. <laughs> Happy Empathy Day. I'm Frank Cottrell Voice, the author of Sputnik's Guide to Life on Earth. I'm Shauna Jackson and I'm the author of The Good Turn. And hello from me, I'm Hannah Gold and I'm the author of The Last Bear. Today we're doing an activity called Empathy Power Reads. Power Reads is when you choose a book that really boosts your empathy. And we've chosen three of our favourites to share with you today. So to kick us off, Frank, please tell us about your book. I have chosen Tales from Outer Suburbia by Sean Tan, partly because it's just, it's a book of lots of different stories, lots of different kinds of stories. It's always incredibly beautiful, just like every page is little revelation. But I've chosen a particular story called Eric, which is the story of this sort of weird little alien who is very welcomed by an Earth family and they keep taking him on outings and giving him treats. And he doesn't really say thank you or do anything back. And he doesn't really react to the right thing. So that thing of, for me, the empathy of like, sometimes people can't tell you what they're feeling. Or they'll try and tell you what they're feeling, but they'll do it in ways that are unusual and odd. Uh, and maybe even quite frightening. And sometimes you think you're having a relationship with someone and you think this is very, this isn't working. This isn't, I'm not getting what I like. But if you're patient and you hold on, you have this amazing payoff. So one of the things that Eric does, I've got to show you this because it's so beautiful, is he's constantly sort of taking little things, plugs, fuses, wrappers, buttons, and stuff like this. And when he leaves at the end, they're like, why does he keep doing that? When he leaves at the end, where he's been sleeping, he's made this amazing. Isn't this beautiful? Mm. So this is him saying everything that they wanted him to say, but in his own way. So for me, empathy is like trying to listen to people what they're not able to say that's really beautiful frank i really like that show and the pictures just looks incredible i was having a conversation actually yesterday with like a, a norwegian friend and talking about how a language differs and so like for example scandinavian languages are so direct and when she first came here and she never used to say please or thank you everyone just thought she was really rude so it's yeah. understanding i suppose in schools where you have children coming from different cultures maybe refugees who are speaking in a different language way and then understanding and using our empathy skills to realize if they might be using english differently that actually understanding the root of that and realizing that deep down they're just as nice and kind as we are perhaps yeah not everybody communicates in the same way my book is um, a middle grade book called Glitter Boy by Ian Eagleton. And it's about a boy called James who loves dancing, he loves poetry, and he loves Mariah Carey. And this is the reason why I'm wearing gl a glittery top. We know and... you dress like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is my everyday gear, okay? Basically, James is um, he's confused about his sexuality and he feels like his dad doesn't really understand and his teacher is getting married to his boyfriend and James has been invited to take part in this choir to sing at the wedding but James's dad doesn't really want him to do it out of some sort of I suppose unspoken prejudice so James goes through this big sort of journey where he's also being bullied at school for, and he's being called gay the whole time so in the book, James and his classmates have to give a presentation to the rest of the class. And he chooses these kind of like a really amazing activists from the LGBTQ plus community. And during that speech, he shows the rest of the class that all communities deserve kindness, respect, tolerance and acceptance. And in that process, James understands what it's like to embrace who he really is. I think that's so it's so sweet and so important that James did that presentation for his class because it really took it took bravery for him to stand up and it was really empathy obviously the whole book is about empathy and being empathetic to the plight of the LGBTQIA plus community but I feel like the presentation itself was a really good way of sharing that message and maybe that's something that some of our children, everyone who's listening at home can think about, like, what are the ways to share what you're concerned about and what you care about? And how can you do it in ways that will encourage other people to also care about what you care about? So there's one thing I think anyone listening can come out of this. It's like 
you know, don't be nice to people who are a bit different, and especially if they may be struggling to come to terms with who they may or may not be. But also there's another level of bravery, which is the person who befriends the person who's different. I think that's the really important thing. And, you know, lots of people are different, but standing with someone and saying, I'm not like you, but I'm with you, that is a really, really key thing because it allows other people to join, you know? I think that's a really, really separate kind of great bravery and a really great part of bravery. Shana, I'd really love to hear about the book that you've chosen for Empathy Day. Can you share this with us? Yeah, of course. So I've chosen um, Hey You, uh, which is an empowering celebration of growing up black. And it's, well, it, it's by Dapo Radiola, who is a really great illustrator and writer, but he's also um, brought on a whole host of other illustrators in this book. And this book is, it's like a love letter to, uh, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but to Dapo's unborn child, really. And it's a inspirational message of hope for young black children who often struggle in the world because the world isn't fair and it's full of beautiful illustrations and words that tell you to be positive and to really think about the brilliant sides of being black as well as being aware of some of the negative things that do happen when you're born with black and brown skin um but I think this book is like empathetic through just um beyond the pages as well because I think the uh, author of this book, Dapo, was really being empathetic to other illustrators when he came up with the, the idea for this book, because he also he always wanted to include 18 other illustrators. He was really thinking about other people's careers and how they could be published, too. And when this book won many awards, but I think it won um, the British Book of the Year, he made sure that every illustrator was was uh, listed and everybody got a trophy so he he this book is not just about empathy inside but it's the whole thing is an is an act of empathy uh which is why i really really love it it's so great i look i mean i look i that's i would heartily recommend other people look at that book because Dapo is so special himself and that there's a, jo a joy there that we're talking about empathy is like going to dark places and rescuing people. But there's a joy in recognising somebody else and what they really are and embracing that. What I love about Dapper as well is the fact that he's one of the few sort of illustrators who's forging a path who isn't white. You know, so he's coming onto the scene. So for anybody listening to this that wants to be like an illustrator's word, he's the one that's been sort of carving this path, which is a hard path sometimes for everybody else to follow. And you always need those kind of fire starters. So he, like you said, Shana, he stands for so much more than than just the book, although the book is obviously amazing as well. It's having those figureheads in life that allow, that part the seas for so many more people to follow. Thank you so much for your suggestions. I can't wait to read all of those books and I haven't read them yet, but I know that those characters, I just can't wait to walk in their shoes and see what they see through their eyes. And speaking of eyes, if you wanna be a bit more empathetic, why not make your own empathy day glasses like I have, which really helps you to focus and look through the eyes of all the characters in these wonderful books. That's they, brilliant. Yeah, they are impressive glasses. Yeah, impressive. I don't have empathy glasses, but I have an empathy pose because I do that. And now I'm looking differently. <laughs> oh, I like that. All right, that's a great power pose. Now, I've done something a little bit different for Glitter Boy. <laughs> that's my best Mariah Carey impersonation. Okay, that's all I've got. It was brilliant. I love it. So... And empathy on. is all about kind of broadening your horizon. So I went down to the sea to do my empathy pose. Oh, oh that's great. That's so cool. Oh, I love that. I really like book. that. My book. Something about the sea as well, just looking out on the horizon, isn't it? It just, it just instantly just kind of opens your mind and your Absolutely. vista. Yeah, yeah, I love it. My power pose for Hey You is this. Wait for it which looks a bit strange, but it's me saying, hey, which is actually about me um, trying to speak up. I like that. I think speaking up is important um, yeah. when we're thinking about empathy and being empathetic. 
Yeah, and using our voice as kind of like vehicles of change, which we can all do. I love it. And so now it's your turn. Why not choose your power read and make your empathy glasses? Or take your power read away from school and away from home to some wild place and be alone with your thoughts. Or you could choose to stay at home or in your classroom and simply be fabulous. I hope you have a fantastic Empathy Day doing all these amazing activities wherever you may be. Happy, Happy Empathy, Empathy Day! Day. Bye! Bye! Bye.